in today's session we will continue our discussion on labor demand and we will proceed to understand the long run demand for labor this is the shape of the long run demand for labor it is a downward sloping demand curve where the vertical line measures the wage rate and then the horizontal line measures the level of employment so it is a downward sloping curve where in this case there is a negative relationship between wage rate and the level of employment for example when the level of wage rate is at w0 then the level of long run demand for labor is 25 and when the wage rate declines to w1 the level of employment rises to 50 workers i think that's very straightforward over here we see the difference between the short run and the long run demand for labor one big difference between the two is that for the long run demand for labor it is more elastic as shown here the long run demand for labor is flatter as compared to the short run demand for labor that is much steeper when we measure the elasticity of demand for worker in the long run we will find that the coefficient will be more than one in general it shows that the long run demand curve is more elastic as compared to the short run demand curve for labor because the short run demand for labor is steeper that means firms are less sensitive to the wage change in the short run period it takes big change in the wage rate for some small adjustment in the change in employment as compared in the long run case here it takes just a small change in the wage rate for a big change in the level of employment the reason for this is that in the long run the firm can take full advantage of the economic opportunities as a result of the change in the wage rate the firm has more time to adjust in the long run as compared in the short run so that's the common reason why when we calculate the elasticity of demand between short run and the long run for workers we will find generally the following observation so this is the way how we can calculate the elasticity of demand for worker i want to share some of the empirical findings for the estimates of the elasticity there is some range when we calculate between the short run and long run elasticity of demand for worker where in the short run it ranges from 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 while in the long run it is around one more of a unit elastic while in the case of a short run it is less than one indicating the case of inelastic demand for worker another concept that we want to learn today is the shape of our isoquant earlier we have presented isoquant as a convex curve something like this so this is the common isoquants that we have seen earlier over here these are two extreme cases where in the first case as indicated by the left diagram it shows the case where capital and labor are perfect substitutes the isoquant is a linear line in this example we will find that two workers can always be substituted for one machine as when we calculate the slope of this isoquant you will find that the slope is equal to two so the slope here is a constant value and if we calculate that slope it gives us two and here we can say that two workers can always be substituted for one machine on the other hand in the right diagram this is another extreme case where the two inputs capital and labor are perfect complement this is the isoquants let's say this isoquant we can produce q0 level of output that means so all points along this isoquant the firm can produce q0 level of output 
To produce this Q0 level of output, the firm can use 5 capital and 20 workers or 5 capital and let's say 25 workers. Let's say over here 25 workers. Alright, so over here 25 workers or even maybe 40 workers, 5 capital, 40 workers. It, those combinations are still will give the firm Q0 level of output because regardless how many workers the firm add to this 5 capital, it's become a perfect complementary. Likewise, the firm also can employ 20 workers to work with 5 machines or even more than 5 machines. Still, the firm can produce Q0 level of output. We can hold capital at 5 units and we can keep adding more workers or we can hold workers at 20 and we can keep adding more capital. That would still produce the same level of output Q0. In that context, we have a case of a, what we term as the right angle isoquant. So in this case, there is no substitution effect. A change in which does not alter the input mix at all. So that's what we can say in this case. In between of these two extreme cases, that's where we will find our normal isoquants as I show you here. This is the normal isoquants that we usually see. Another important observation we find here is that the more curved the isoquant, the smaller will be the substitution effect. Over here, there is no substitution effect because this is totally a right angle shape. This is a much flatter isoquant and this is the extreme case, a linear isoquant. So with that understanding, Let's move on to the concept of elasticity of substitution. What is the elasticity of substitution? It gives us the measure of the curvature of the isoquants. As I have indicated earlier, the more curved the isoquants, the smaller will be the substitution effect. So the elasticity of substitution between capital and labor Holding output constant is given by this formula. The percentage change in the capital worker ratio over the percentage change in the input price ratio. So this is how we calculate the elasticity of substitution. If you use that elasticity of substitution, it will give us a positive number and that number tells us the percentage change in the capital labor ratio resulting from a 1% change in the ratio of the input price. So zero coefficient means that the inputs are perfect complement and that's indicated by the right angle shape of the isoquant. In finite, if the isoquant is linear. This is a case of a perfect substitute between the inputs, capital and labor. So that's the understanding we get from calculating the elasticity of substitution. To recap, in this session, we have looked at the shape of the long run demand for labor and we made a comparison between the short run demand and also the long run demand in terms of the elasticity. We also learn in this session the concept of elasticity of substitution in which it is important to measure how curved is our isoquant. And over here, we have two extreme cases where the inputs can be both perfect substitute or over here, the inputs are perfect complements. And when we use the elasticity of substitution, by calculating the coefficient using this formula, we then can identify whether the inputs are perfect complements or the inputs are perfect substitute as indicated by the last two points here. I think that's all for the session today. Thank you. Wassalam.